Hi, my name is Janice and I'm a science teacher here in Clearwater, Florida. And today I'm going to talk to you about the relationship between atomic radii and atomic number and how you actually graph that relationship. So before we get into the graph, we need to understand what each of those things mean. Remember that an atom is made up of several different parts. It's actually made of three subatomic particles that are found in a little different place in the atom itself. So the atom has a nucleus that's going to have positive charges as well as neutral neutrons. These positive charges are protons. And then around it, it's going to have an electron cloud. Well, each level of the electron cloud holds a different number of electrons. The first level is only going to be able to hold two electrons. But as we go up in atomic number, each cloud can hold a few more. So most of the clouds above that are able to hold eight electrons. So there's eight electrons, and there would be eight protons in the middle if there were eight electrons around the outside. That's what the atom itself looks like. Remember, the atomic number is going to be the number of protons as well as the number of electrons in the atom itself. Now, every single element, helium, hydrogen, chlorine, has a different atomic number. That's what makes one element different from another is the number of protons and electrons that they have. So there's actually two different relationships we're going to look at when we graph, and two different ways that the graph would look. So let's talk first about what happens to the atomic radii as we go down the periodic table. Because as we're going down the periodic table, we're adding a ring every time. So level one's only going to have one ring of the electron cloud, whereas level seven's going to have seven levels. So what we're going to look at is we're going to graph the atomic radii or radius by the atomic number. Now the radius, remember, is the distance from the center to the outside of a circle. So when we're talking about the radius of an atom, we're talking about the distance from the center of the nucleus to the outside of the electron cloud. So remember I said that as we go down the periodic table, as we go from level one over to level seven, the atomic number is increasing. And so the atomic radius is actually going to increase because we're adding rings. But that's not the only relationship. Remember I said we're looking at two different factors. So as we go down the levels, we're getting a larger atomic radius. But within one row of the periodic table, something different happens. And that's got to do with the attraction between positive and negative charges. So as you go across a row, or a period, we call that in you know, the periodic table in chemistry, something different happens. As I'm adding more protons and I'm adding more electrons, I'm actually increasing the amount of attraction between the inside and the outside of the circle. And so what's going to happen as I increase the attraction is that the size of the circle is actually going to shrink. It's going to get smaller. So instead of the radius going up like it did here, the radius is actually going to go down. So as you go down the periodic table, you add a ring, the radius increases. But as you go across the periodic table, the attraction between the protons and the electrons is getting larger. And so the atom itself is actually shrinking in because there's a lot of empty space in that electron cloud. The atom's going to shrink in, and so the radius is actually going to reduce. And that would be how you would graph the relationship between atomic radii and atomic number. I'm Janice from Clearwater. Have a great day.